small farms are pretty inefficient things. I mean, actually, you do need to have big, big farming to, to be more efficient. Uh, but I suppose for multinationals, there's cheaper ways of growing food uh, abroad. So, yeah, you know, if they can make more profits by shunting food all over the world, they, they will do. And they, they're perfectly happy to reduce farmers to, as you say, watching watching wind farms and be subsidised by other workers in order to build these completely stupid things. But overall, it's part of a de-industrialisation plan uh, for the West because super profits can be made by workers in India, Turkey and, uh, and uh, China making, making machinery. Um, so in the case of how the European Union operates, you can see that Wall Street interests are fully behind the European Union, which is a mechanism actually to de-industrialise the West. And you can see how it happened in Teesside, North East England. Energy prices are so high that the production of steel becomes unprofitable. So they run it down. A company from India then buys up the land and, and the factory saying they're going to save it. They get carbon credits under the European Union Emission Trading Scheme by having run down an industry and reducing their CO2. Then they announce it can't be saved and then they use those carbon credits in India to build another plant. Even though the MP for the area said, look, those carbon credits were gained by rundown of industry here. We want them to be used to build another industry in Britain. And the European Emission Trading Scheme said, no, those carbon credits are owned by the Indian company, they're going to India. So what happened was we've had taxpayers paying for the destruction of industry in Britain, destruction of jobs in Britain, and the removal of the industry to India and the production of CO2 has simply been transferred from Britain to India. There's been no reduction in CO2 worldwide and if that's meant to be saving the planet it's saved nothing at all. It's just deindustrialized the West and caused more super exploitation of even lower paid workers in India. And you see this type of thing internationally will happen all the time so long as the multinationals can use man-made climate change and, uh, as an ideological weapon to justify super profits. Partly lost its way when the Berlin Wall came down and uh, turned from a sort of straightforward socialist ideology to something like green, red and green mixture, you see. And, and develop things like eco-socialism, whatever that means. Uh, and of course this made them ideal prey for the climate change ideology, which is completely uh, generated by the, the uh, international big business interest. We all want to do something good, you know, and right, saving right. the planet is good. So right. I say, look, okay, saving the planet is good. But let's say all these trees and so on, we should defend them for their own sake. We defend biodiversity for its own sake. Do not tie this to a story about CO2 which may be untrue. But this is the main problem. So you have a sort of flag following left where people justify what they believe in, but in terms of who else believes it. So when I come up with stuff about climate change, they say, oh yeah, but George Bush agrees with you. How does it feel agreeing with George Bush? I mean, you must be wrong. You know, well, this is silly. I say, well, look, if George Bush walks in the room and tells you it's Tuesday, I suppose you say it must be Wednesday, then, do you? I mean, yeah. You've got to look at the facts and the evidence to decide anything. And who, believe, who else believes it or not is nothing whatsoever to do with what is true.